Swiftwater Pocono Mountain East High School. It is the Mountain Valley Conference Boys Championship game between Pocono Mountain West and Pleasant Valley. Hi everyone, along with Bob Milkfee, I'm Bob Capasso, glad to have you along. The Panthers are the two-time defending champs. These two met in last year's final. It wasn't close. The Bears will look to turn the table. Boy, look for revenge tonight, Bob. A good outing against Strasburg. Kind of faded toward the end. The Bears came out with a big victory against the Mounties in that semifinal game. I think they're up to it tonight. They always say it's so hard to beat a team three times in a season. Brad Pencil said, well, we took care of that in the semifinals against East Roundsburg South. They want to do it again tonight. No question about it. He gets his team ready every game, no matter championship game, semifinals, whatever. Brad, Coach Pat Prenzel has had his West Panthers ready to play. And they have been the dominant team all year. Absolutely. Talent-wise, I'll tell you what, aggressive play, both ends of the court. Just a very talented ball club. All right, it's time for our hardwood headliners and Eric Vick is the Mountain Valley Conference MVP, and he showed why in the two meetings here and in the semifinal with 22 points against the Cavaliers. And can he control the basketball, Bob? Not only scoring. I mean, you talk about his scoring ability, but how quick is that kid? Eric gets to the ball so quickly, brings it up, handles the ball, distributes the ball, and scores. What more can you do for this Panther ball club? How about Darren Dixon? He had two huge games under the boards against Pleasant Valley, and that'll be key against the PV Big well, Guys. he's going to face a big inside line with the Bears inside, particularly one Marquise Brown at 6'4". Dixon has to do his job under the glass. And that takes us to Pleasant Valley and the aforementioned Marquise Brown. He is a low to handle inside. Had a big game in the second matchup between these two teams. And how about Dan Herbeck? Had a very solid game in the semifinal. He'll have to come up big tonight against the very quick guards of Pocono West. Yeah, Marquise Brown inside, Bob, has to do his share of scoring. He's got to take the load on the offensive end, give that the inside presence of the uh, Panthers some trouble inside. Herbeck, hey, watch out. Pressure. Aggressive defense, quick defense by these Panthers. He's going to have his hands full. And that takes us to Dr. Bob's board. And we mentioned the matchups inside, and those are going to be key, especially the West guys against the huge uh, bodies inside for Pleasant yeah, Valley. I really think so, and I think the Bears have to really be tough under the glass, particularly in the paint. They've got size advantage, so they have to take advantage of that to win tonight's ball game. But before that, always a pleasure. Boy, I always seem to have the Panthers and the Bears with me, right? You girls been with me before, right? Several times. But for the uh, Panthers, names are cheerleaders, that is. Teresa Poma, Sherry DeShane, Megan Rostin, and for the Lady Bears cheerleader. Tiara Smith. Kylie Buetti. Bridget Fitzgerald. I'm going to ask you to do a cheer one of these times, okay? If you're with me again, you're going to put the board down and do a cheer. But we say stay at home. What does that mean? Big guy inside. Marquise Brown, 6'4", has to be determined inside, maintain his position, block out, has to be a factor under the board. Sekou Jones, also 6'3", size advantage there, must do the same thing against his aggressive uh, Panther offense. Hardy has to crash the boards. Devin Howard has to play tough inside. Baptiste, the only big guy for the West Panthers. They play with relatively under six footers. Baptiste at 6'3 can go outside and inside. So have to block him out. Uh, the Bears to be effective. But, but watch out. This Eric Vick, when he brings up the ball, how quick is he distributing the basketball off the penetration dribble? And a guy named Wiggins on the other side. What a combo this is in the guard position. One thing about this uh, Panther ball club, they are quick, they are aggressive, they like to get in a transition offense, they like to go to the glass. But I'll tell you what PV has to do. They have to have help defense because you're going to see a lot of dribble and pass penetration uh, by the Panthers tonight. So help defense. Stop basketball. That's the priority. Get back on defense. This club, the Panthers like to run. Westwood likes to get it up and down. Got to get back quick. Have to control the boards. And one thing, Bob, Marquise Brown cannot afford to get in foul trouble. They need him in the game. They need a big game out of Marquise Brown. You okay? I think he yeah, just, ready to play. You just got in the they're game in the ball. ball. They saw my shooting ability, so they gave me a pass. <laughs> <laughs> We're set to go. It's the Mountain Valley Boys Final. Pleasant Valley and Pocono West, the starting lineups and the opening tap are coming up.
back at Pocono Mountain East for the Mountain Valley Boys Final. And time for tonight's starting lineups. Devon Howard, the excellent point guard for the Bears, starts at one guard, a 6'1 senior, Dan Herbeck. The 5'11 senior is number 21. Brian Sharp is up front, a 6'1 sophomore, number 20. Seku Jones is number 23, a 6'3 senior. And Marquise Brown, the center, is a 6'4 junior, number double zero. For the West Panthers, Eric Vick and Joe Wigan, Wiggins have been so outstanding all year. Vick, a 5'8", senior, number three. Wiggins, a 5'11", junior, number 30. Up front, Darren Dixon, 5'9", and that's not far off. I'd say maybe 5'10", 5'11", at the most, but he plays a lot bigger. He's number one. Jordan Hardy, a 5'9", junior, number 40. And Leon Baptiste, a 6'3", senior, number 32. Yeah, definitely size advantage inside uh, for the uh, Bears tonight, Bob. But, boy, this... Uh, West Panther Ball Club, so aggressive, make up for aggressiveness for size. Ben Piankowski in his 18th year, 220 victories to his credit so far as head coach of Pleasant Valley. There's Brad Pinsel. He has five Mountain Valley championships. He looks to tie Sean Thornton with a six, 445 victories in 24 years, both here at Pocono Mountain and at Pocono Mountain West. Boy, enthusiastic crowd here tonight. Really love to hear this. West and PV for the Mountain Valley Championship. And for a little bit more on this matchup and past matchups, we go to Mark McKeon. Yeah, guys, uh, these teams are no strangers to meeting each other in this situation. They met four times in the MVC playoffs, Pleasant Valley and Pocono Mountain West. The Panthers have won three of those meetings, including the 2005 and 2012 MVC championship games. One more note, the last time a school had both the boys and girls champion was 2003. That was Pleasant Valley. The Panthers can accomplish that tonight if they win. Of course, the girls just won the MVC girls title 48-22 over Pleasant Valley. Back to you. Good look at Marquise Brown there, double zero, the big guy inside, the spaceman, I call him, in the low paint area for the Bears. It must be effective tonight. Bob hurt his ankle the other day, but he looks like he's ready to play. Pleasant Valley in the road blue moves left to right. Pocono Mountain West in the home white moves right to left. West will open with the basketball. Here's Vic, the dribble drive, the pull up, and the basket. Now how tough is it to play an Eric Vic one on one in the man straight up man? It is tough, I'll tell you. Quick stop, quick, tries to get around you. You just block that, man gets right over the top of you. 18 and 17 in the two meetings, a combined six three pointers. He had 22 points with. Three three-pointers and four assists in the semifinal win over East Roundsburg South. Sharp has that roll off. Herbeck keeps it alive, but into the hands of Wiggins. Wiggins leans in in a crowd and gets tied up. And the arrow will give it to Pleasant Valley. And this is what we mean when you got to get back defensively if you're the Bears. They want to push it up. Just look that. Didn't have numbers, but keep coming at you. Pleasant Valley beat Stroudsburg 47-45 in the semifinals. And the Panthers beat East Stroudsburg South 56-44. to Howard outside sharp for three. He comes up short, and it's a rebound for Hardy. Hardy, end to end. He will lay it in, and the Panthers have the first two baskets. Oh, words were just out of my mouth, weren't they? You gotta get back. This is what they do to you. They love that transition offense. Look at Marquise Brown working in the backcourt, and great hustle there by Darren Dixon, and we get into the action again here. Nice hands. Get hit in the head. You have a nice hands. Quick, man. Quick I hands. Thought you I lost dropped that. It. Velvet. The Velcro on those hands. Howard has that hop out. There's Darren Dixon watch on the rebound. Out, watch out. Ahead, Vic. And oh, my. Him, but he's oh able to my. regain possession and score. Yeah, I thought he lost the handle. Might go over the baseline. Uh-uh. What a shot. Reverse layup off the glass. That's rifled inside looking for Seku Jones. It will stay with Pleasant Valley. 
Last year's matchup, you know, it wasn't really close. 82-49, Pocono Mountain West with the championship. Their second in a row. Howard for three, he's got it, and Pleasant Valley is on the board. Yeah, that kid has to go to the basket. He can dribble penetration, has room, has to unload. He's very effective when he has room. Vic can't answer, but the long rebound comes to Hardy. Hardy, nice ball fake, and then he has it blocked by Jones. And here comes Sharp the other way. To the corner, Herbeck, the long two rattles out and they'll get Brown over the top. That's the first foul of the game. Yeah, you don't want to get in early foul trouble with your Marquise Brown. You want to keep playing because they need him inside, size-wise bomb offensively and defensively. Unnecessary foul there, just went over the back. You know, we've watched a couple of three-point shots here early on. There's a sharp contrast between the two teams as Pleasant Valley takes that away. Pocono West has made and attempted nearly twice as many as Pleasant Valley. In fact, Eric Vick has more three-pointers made, 63, than the entire Pleasant Valley team, 61. Jones comes up short. Hardy goes in to end and has it roll off. Wiggins is there for the putback, and Wiggins is on the board. A good follow-up on the missed transition game again. Great aggressive play. Wiggins doesn't believe it's going to go in. You never kind of give up on it. He doesn't want to put back. And the Bears want a timeout here as they find themselves down early, 8-3. to three. Let's take a look at the Bears. They have won Mountain Valley Championship. That came back in 2003. They beat East Stroudsburg South in the final. They actually beat West in the semifinal that year. They have been runners up four times. You go back to the 98 year. They lost to Stroudsburg, but beat them in the district final. They have not had a lot of success against West in postseason play in the Mountain Valley. This is, however, the third straight league tournament appearance. Uh, great job, Coach Ken Pienkowski has done in his tenure uh, with the Pleasant Valley Bears getting to this situation several times in his career. And, of course, on the other end, one Coach Brad Pencil. We know the success he's had since he's been with the uh, Panthers. Remember, originally started with the original uh, Pocono Mountain East, which we're here tonight, first time up here in a while for us, Bob. Nice venue here, too, and the beautiful gym here at Pocono Mountain East. Let's go to Mark. Yeah, guys, uh, Ken Piankowski really just giving his team a little bit of a pep talk there at the end. It was mainly just X's and O's, but he said, he goes, these guys are going to come out and try to scare you. He said, just take a deep breath, calm down, and play basketball. They're trying to convey to his team. I think so far, Pleasant Valley has played with composure here against the Panthers, guys. Back to you. Vic with a crossover, trying to push it inside to Leon Baptiste. He can't hold on, and it will go back to Pleasant Valley. Using the big guy to beat that zone, keeps the ball up high, tries to find the open man, but how about that double there? Wiggins nearly makes the save, and it will be Pleasant Valley basketball. So they come up with clamp your fast, Bob. They're so quick that they'll get that double team fast. What you have to do when you receive the ball, one guy on you, you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you look for the open man right away, get it up court. Herbeck. Howard all the way around to Sharp for three. He back rims it, but Herbeck rebounds. Wouldn't hurt if one of those dropped either for the Bears. Watch out. The skip pass stolen by Dixon. Dixon to the other end. Can't get the roll, but he does, however, pick up the foul on Herbeck. That's the first foul on Dan and the second on Pleasant Valley. Our officials tonight, Rod Strobel Jr., Frank D'Angelo, and Jack Keeter. Typical of the West Panthers defensive and aggressive great anticipation by Dixon on the interception then pushing the ball out front power type dribble to lead the way up court transition game working again gets on the foul line Dixon hits both free throws and it's a seven point lead now for Pocono Mountain West we are halfway through the first of the Mountain Valley Boys Basketball Championship game. 
Double up on Marquise Brown, high post now, the front and the uh, back, the guy front and back. Jones comes up short, Hardy grabs the rebound, and you can see that West wants to run as soon as they grab that basketball. They you, want to turn and go. Are you kidding? I don't think they know any other word, Bob. Run is the only word in their vocabulary when it comes to the game of basketball. They'll all you backdoor Vic, but he was too far underneath the basket. And then off the rebound, it is off of West, and it'll go to Pleasant Valley for the Bears. Jarius Hozier, a 5'11 junior, number 11 is in. And Sean Cooper, a 5'10 junior, number 10, is in for the Panthers. He had 10 rebounds in the semifinal. Yeah, and Hozier did a nice job the other night handling the basketball in the point situation for the West Panthers. The Bears nearly throw it away. It's saved by Sharp, but into the hands of West. Hardy for three, comes up short. Rebounded by Wiggins inside, and he has it blocked, and it will stay with West. Underneath, loose balls there is so quick that Panthers, they get to it quickly. What you gotta do is find a body and keep a body away from the ball. I forget the ball, I just pick out a body. Off the screen, Vic for three, that comes off, and it's Jones with the rebound. Here's Howard on the outlet. Howard gets around the defender and hits the scoop. That's just a nice move by Devin Howard. Athleticism uh, personified. Great move. Vic tries to make the move, and on the double team, he gets grabbed. And they will get Hozier on the foul. It's his first, and the third on the Bears. Zach Deegan is in for PV. He is a 5'7 junior. Off the inbound, they get it into the hands of Sean Cooper, and Cooper is on the board quickly. Yeah, too easy. Lack of communication defensively by the Bears. And they'll get a hold on Jordan Hardy. That is the first foul on Pocono West. They'll commit some fouls in this pressure defense. That's normal for the West Panthers, but Bob, they go really deep on the bench. They'll go nine, possibly ten. So can afford some foul trouble uh, by the guys out on the floor playing at this time. Pass that right to you, Bob. No hands. No. <laughs> you so had your Bears. opportunity, I had mine. I failed also. So the Bears turn it over again. On the inbound, they try to force it into Cooper. There was not a very large seam to get it through, and it will be Pleasant Valley ball. Deegan and Howard. paint play more against this defense, Bob. Marquise Brown looking for the ball. Good ball movement there. How's, uh, Hosier is going to be fouled. And they will get Joe Wiggins with his first personal. Watch it here. Jones, great bounce pass along the baseline. Hosier misses first good effort to go back with the ball. Boy, free throw shooting was a nightmare oh, yeah. for Don't Pleasant even, Valley. Oh. They went 10 for 19 from the line against Stroudsburg. At one point, they missed 11 straight and went 6 for 20 in the fourth quarter to allow Stroudsburg back in the game. That is off of Sekou Jones. It'll be West basketball. That was a great play by Dixon, Bob, to knock it off the body of Jones. Pleasant Valley led by 17 late in that game before Stroudsburg came back and tied it on two occasions. And Brad Pencil wants a timeout. He did not like the way that press was shaping up. Well, he didn't like the setup, I think, initially against the pressure defense, zone type pressure extended by the Bears. Good move there by Coach Piankowski. So uh, Brad's gonna, Coach Brad Pencil's gonna settle his club down and uh, he'll X his O's on the board. Here is the Pocono West team page. Five MVC championships. 05, 07, 08, 11 and 12. A couple of back-to-backs in there. How about this stat? 
since the 06-07 season, including Mountain Valley playoffs. Wow. The Panthers are 86-6 and six in Mountain Valley play. That's remarkable. Wow. And they lost that one uh, MVC title game against their rival Pocono East in 2010. Got back at them in 2011, beating East for the championship. Two minutes left here in the first. And nearly goes backward, saved by Hozier. Jones, the pull up from 18, throws it long. Loose ball, and they'll get a foul on West. They will call Baptiste with his first personal. Yeah, they're gonna have trouble with the spaceman in there. I'll tell you what, he gets good position inside, tough to get around him, keeps the ball up high. That's one Marquise Brown. Ozier tries to push it into Brown. It's knocked away, and then it's last touched by West, it'll be Pleasant Valley ball. And draw a little attention inside. Did Marquise double zero? Wow, three white shirts just surround him in low paint. Marquise nearly took that three. He's only shot two this year. He's made one. Yeah. And he traveled. Yeah. Well, they come up and clap him. He was going to make the quick turn, ran into the defender, causing him to move his feet. And turns the ball over. Try to get Marquise Brown and Bow Bob in the paint area. Tough to do so thus far. Wiggins in a tough spot there. But Eric Vick comes to help him out. Wiggins. Wiggins hops. To the right side of the lane, misses the short jumper, and it's rebounded by Brown. We're down to the last minute of this first quarter. Sharp pushes it inside. Marquise Brown, he'll go to the reverse and nice score. Nice move on the reverse way up by the spaceman inside. The great entry pass to get it to him by Brian Sharp. That's the first basket for Marquise Brown. He averages nearly a double-double. 13 points, 9.9 .9 rebounds per game. He had 11 rebounds against Stroudsburg in the semifinal. Bob, what opened it up for uh, Brown inside? Uh, Sharp looks at the basket, draws the defense out, and then a quick entry pass inside. That'll work to try to open it up more for him in the low post. He's tough to handle. Wiggins, now Dixon. Wiggins with five. Vic up top for three. That's off. Loose ball on the rebound. Finally grabbed by Hozier, and that ends the first. That's nice plan. Got the last one failed to convert, but I'll tell you what, not insurmountable. Five-point difference here. Bears only down by five. Got to pick it up a little bit on the uh, offensive end. That's it for one on the Palmerton Garage Door scoreboard. It's West 12, PV7. Scott Signs and Printing, your preferred family-owned and operated printing and signage company, is now pleased to offer Big Heads as part of their large format printing services. We can transform any of your photos into colorful life-size wall graphics that can be put anywhere in your home or office without damaging your walls. Let us turn your favorite memories into big celebrations without having to spend big bucks. Remember, Scott Signs and Printing, for all your printing and signage needs. Don't forget this Monday, we will have our Sports Scene 13 District Playoff Preview Show. We'll go two hours Monday from 7 to 9. We'll open up the phone lines and take your calls and discuss the upcoming District 11 basketball playoffs. It's always a fun couple of hours there. That's Monday at 7 o'clock. Yeah, rebounding your edge to West 9 to 5 in that first quarter, Bob. And we said transition game to get an up-tempo game and the lead that they have basically they got to get it off the board with a good job edging the uh, uh, bears off the glass in that first quarter let's go to mark yeah pleasant valley coach ken piankowski kind of referencing last year's game 
And they came out and knocked us out right away. He said, hey, if this is their best punch, look at the scoreboard. We're only down 12-7. So still trying to give his team some confidence here against the favored West squad. Back to you. That's a long three in the miss. John Pacienza, nice six move. eight junior number 24 into the game. Nice move by Hosey again, get around his defender. That's his first basket. Bob, and your coach P Ken Pienkowski, a good point there because this West Panther ball club averages 62 points a game. If you're holding to 12 in the first quarter, you're doing a job. Yeah. Foul is on Baptiste, and that'll be his second. Pazienza in did not play in the semifinal. Earlier, I think I had mentioned that Eric Vick had 63 three-pointers. He actually has 64 coming into the game to Pleasant Valley six uh, to uh, Pleasant Valley 61. That was almost 62, but it comes off. Herbeck with the rebound and the turnaround jumper. Blue cards, I move. Herbeck, the turnaround. That's his first basket. Vic at the other end. Pazienza swaps it away, but they'll get Howard on the blocking foul. Boy, Pazienza makes his presence felt immediately, doesn't he? Big swat away. There's the big guy. This is, what, 6'8"? On our sheets here, Bob, and he does look a good 6'8". A little intimidation factor getting in the game and then swatting it away when it comes down the paint at you for the first time. Watch it here. Big challenges. Bango! Night my house, you're not. He says almost, Big he John. that with his elbow. <laughs> and then Pazienza grabs the rebound off the two Vic misses. Vic's a 78% shooter. He struggled the other night as well from the line. And he's 0 for 2 here. Good hustle by Sharp to keep it on the Bears' end. The Bears with a chance for the lead. Howard misses on the turnaround. It's back tap to Herbeck. Hosier. That comes off. Herbeck with the rebound. And he is hit by Dixon. That'll be the first foul on Darren Dixon. And now the fifth on Pocono Mountain West. And not typical here in the second quarter, Bob, of getting to the basketball. A little lazy out there. The West Panthers, the Bears, beating them to those loose balls. Don't do that too often. It hasn't been done that often throughout the year. Not with their quickness and aggressive style of play. Howard. No, and the rebound is grabbed by Cooper. And Cooper is grabbed by Panzienza. That is his first. Well, that was a good call. Uh, Panzienza going after the basketball, trying to knock it away. Oh, should have just taken his stance down court. Ran down, prevented the... Uh, a breakaway, but they did reach. Good call. Big club in there. You got 6'4", Marquise Brown, and Pazienza in the paint, Bob, in that defense at 6'8". That's for the Bears. Wiggins tries with another block and Sharp with the rebound. And what, what looked good about that, Bob? Great timing on Pazienza's part. Pleasant Valley has not led tonight. Howard for the lead. Got it. And Pleasant How Valley leads. That? That's the second three-pointer for Devon Howard. Didn't lose composure being down and just worked their way back. It's a two-point lead for Pleasant Valley. Here's Cooper in the lane. Out for Vic, and Vic gets hit by a quick double team. Maybe a little uh, intimidation inside with Pazienza there. A nice fadeaway jumper. Cooper ties it up at 14. Sean Cooper gives them great minutes off the bench. 5.6 points over five rebounds. 5.2 rebounds a game. He had 10 rebounds in the semifinal win against East Roundford South. 
Howard on the drive to retake the lead. Cooper with very good defense. Here comes Vic the other way. And then Vic tripled it a little too hard. And can we do it? It'll go back to PV. But Urbeck does a nice job with him, Bob, just laying body against body. Vic leans into him. Urbeck didn't give up. Lean back, caused the turnover. Nice move by Urbeck. The Bears break the press. Herbeck for three. Brown went to the floor trying to grab the rebound and couldn't hold on, so it will go back to West. Always like to see that, too. Sean Cooper of the, uh, the West Ball Club, Bob, helps big Marcus Brown off the floor. Nice gesture there. In our day, you wouldn't help them up and reach a hand. You'd put a foot on their chest and then walk away. They thought about that alley -oop again to Dixon. Here's Vic, and they're going to get... Well, they're going to get sharp for trying to fight through the screen. That's the first foul on Brian Sharp and the sixth on Pleasant Valley. Which, uh, if I were coach uh, Pienkowski, Bob, I wouldn't mind that foul because that's just good effort on Sharp's part, trying to get over the top of that screen. A little push and shoving going on inside. Uh, official D'Angelo kind of settling the guys down. Uh, like Frank's it. been around a long yeah. time. I'll tell you what, shows his yeah. experience there. Says, okay, knock it off. They thought about the alley-oop, and then Wiggins zigged, and Vic thought he was going to zag, and it will go back to Pleasant Valley. You know, there was a guy, a referee from Palmer, by the name of Steve Honzo, handled the game the same way. That's what it reminded me. Went in there, Frankie D'Angelo, kind of not just talking about, put his hands around, or arms around both of them, kind of got them together, got a little camaraderie there, said, hey, we'll settle down. Let's get back to the game. He also made sure he had their attention. Game is tied up at 14. Herbeck in for Brown, and Brown is fouled by Cooper. Well, there's what we talked about, the uh, big guy inside yep. Brown and uh, also Sekou Jones and how West will handle them and how Pleasant Valley will use him. Well, Marquis played most of the first quarter of high post area. Now he's floating down more low paint and one-on-one -on -one inside there. Boy, no one can handle him one-on-one. -on -one. They've got to double him up, that's for sure, or triple. Sharp for three in the lead, no, and then Herbeck goes over the top of Vic. That's the second foul on Dan Herbeck. Boy, and now gotta, the seventh on PV. You have to discipline, you gotta control your instincts, don't you? The ball's coming down, you got a body in front of you, you try to get to it, you do anything. Make collision there, good call by the official. Uh, good position by Vic inside to pick up the foul. And there's Eric Vic at the line as Devon Howard comes back in for Pleasant Valley. Discipline, discipline. There's the touch. And Vic gives the Panthers back the lead. Pleasant Valley used a 9-0 run to take their first lead, and now West has scored the last four since then. Howard. West comes out to attack. Sharp. And Hozier. Good move there. Jones from high post. He got low Marquise Brown. High low. They're going to call the offensive. Hozier with the little bit of shoulder there to pick up the foul. That is his second. Well, was unsure on what to do with the basketball. That was the whole bare offense. That set was not run well at all. Uh, turned the ball over. Why? Hey, aggressive play, quick play on the defensive end by these Panthers. Cooper stuck in the corner. Vic, they'll go alley you back toward Dixon. Dixon can't convert, and here come the Bears the other way. Howard inside Hosier, and it is rejected by Cooper. Holy cow, nice series there, huh? 
Now, Howard, great pass to find Hosier. Better watch out. Cooper says, uh-uh, out of my way, man. Let's watch it here. Cooper, bango, clean block. Great play. Again, looks the same to me. There's no change in there. Sharp fights his way through, and he will draw the foul. It'll go on Wiggins, and that is his second. It just seems the, the Bears, Bob, in the second quarter have picked up a lot of privilege, playing with a lot more confidence against this uh, West defense. Didn't show that most of the first quarter. That's the first point for Brian Sharp. He had seven in the semifinal. He averages 5.3 points and just under three rebounds a game. This one's for the tie. Boy, Coach Piankowski has to be happy with that. Two foul shots in a row. Lance Robinson is into the game, a 5'10 junior, number 25 for Pleasant Valley. Zach Deegan has come back in as well. Wiggins has his pass stolen by Jones. Here's Howard with two and a half left in the first half. Jones in for Brown off the glass, but a little short, and it's Cooper with the rebound. Bob, how many breakaways have you seen while well, that made oh, what a great there. look from Vic into Darren Dixon for his first field goal. I was going to say, how many breakaways has West had in the second quarter? Not nearly like the what they how they opened up the game with. So Bears settle them down that way, but that was too easy, that last one. It's knocked away by Vic. Loose ball on the floor. Deegan is able to come up with it. Here's Robinson for three. He front rims it. Deegan with the rebound and the putback. That's his first basket, and it ties it up again at 18. Great look at anticipating the long bound of that long distance shot. Vic misses the three. He goes down with no call. And here comes Howard slowly across the timeline. Spots up for three, and the lead, no. Vic on the run out. Vic, end to end, has a tip, but not enough. It's good, and the foul on Lance Robinson. Well, a normal player, you don't have numbers. It's Vic against two defenders. You say, hey, you got to pull it back, reload, start your offense. Not an Eric Vic. His speed makes up for it. Aggressive play goes right to the basket. Watch this. Two defenders in front of him. Doesn't matter to Eric. Strong to the bucket. Vic had missed his last six field goal attempts. So he finally finds the basket, and he gets the three-point play. Nine for Eric Vic, and West is back up by three. Sharp is in for Pleasant Valley. Sharp, Howard with Deegan, Brown, and Jones. All right, check that... Uh, Brown is out, and Pazienza is also in. Sharp, Deegan drops it off. Pazienza inside score. Boy, do, do a nice job breaking that press, keeping the ball basically off the floor. Nice passing, breaks it down. We are in the last minute of the second quarter. West leads by one. They push inside for Baptiste. The pass from Hardy was a little low, and he couldn't hold on. The Bears will have a chance for the lead here. A little forcing going on by West in their offensive end, but the good aggressive deed does that to you. Howard on the drive. Jones fights inside for the rebound. Pazienza keeps it alive, but he throws it away. Good effort, though, by the big guy. Hits the floor hard. 6-8 frame spread around the foul line there, trying to keep it in play. Good effort. You like to see that. Hosier back in. Howard out for Pleasant Valley. And when he lays out like that, Bob, it takes up a lot of room. 6-8, you know. We're in the last 15 seconds of the second quarter. 
Wiggins off the screen. Vix spots up for three. Deegan got a hand on it. Wiggins saves it. It's grabbed by Hosier, and that will end the first half. Well, they worked for it, set the last uh, shot up, worked well, got in the hands of the guy they wanted to, and there is Vic, long-range shot off the iron, but I'll tell you what, credit the Bears. Boy, worked hard to come back into this, and what a game, holding a 62-point per game. Uh, West team with only 20 in his first half. Let's go to Mark. All right, here with Pleasant Valley coach Ken Piankowski. You got to like the fact you're down by one here at the half. Your team has played very well. Yeah, not bad. I mean, like I said, that uh, I think West came out with the idea they wanted to try to knock us out in the first couple of minutes. I mean, they always come out with that intensity. They probably had the back of their mind what they did to us last year, you know, at Stroudsburg. I told the guys we got to withstand that, and we did. Luckily, we did. They they played really well early, but we kind of settled in now. We're playing a little bit better. You've been playing scrappy. The pace has been kind of in your favor in the first half so far, it seems. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll take fast breaks, like opportunistic fast breaks if we can get them. But, you know, you don't want to turn it into too much of an up-and-down game with these guys, so... All right, Pleasant Valley uh, looking pretty good here in the first half. Thanks, Coach Pen Ken Piankowski. Bears only down by one, a lot different than where they were a year ago. Back yeah, let to me you. correct myself too, Bob. As we went to Coach uh, Piankowski, I said holding uh, the Panthers to 20. They had 21 in there, but still holding them to 21, 62 points a game. Doing a good job on the defensive end that is the Bears. We have reached the break of the Mountain Valley Boys Basketball Championship game. The two-time defending champs, Pocono Mountain West, lead it. 21 to 20. Plan your next Pocono getaway with a stay at Country Inn and Suites on Interchange Road in Lehighton. Enjoy one of our fabulous suites with a separate bedroom and living area. It's the perfect getaway for the entire family with an indoor pool and hot tub, as well as fitness center and complimentary hot breakfast every morning. You can even bring your family pet. Country Inn and Suites offers romantic getaway specials with Whirlpool Suites, candles, and flowers available. Plan your getaway now. Call Country Inn and Suites at 610-379-5066. Refresh your look. The experienced stylist at the new Mint Salon and Spa, formerly Salon Salvatore Christian, offers cutting-edge technology and premium Redken Chromatics hair color. It's completely ammonia-free and leaves hair twice as strong with extra shine. Call for a special introductory deal. Check out our complete line of Redken products, including Purology, our 100% vegan hair care line. Let the stylist at Mint Salon and Spa refresh your look, hair, body, and nails. If one of the safety eyes is out, that means that it is sensing an obstruction and will not allow the door to close. Uh, very simply, there's normally a little screw to adjust and loosen up, or just very simply clean the eyes off to where you have bright light on both the right side and the left side, and that normally would take care of your problems. For more quick tips, visit Palmerton Garage Doors at palmertongaragedoors.com. Let Northern Lehigh Team Sales outfit your team. Our embroidery and silk screeners will customize your order with high quality and affordable clothing in all sizes. At Northern Lehigh Team Sales, our goal is complete customer satisfaction. We carry the latest performance wear options and accessories, including Under Armour apparel. Check out our extensive clothing line for your team on the field or in the business community. Visit NorthernLehighTeamSales.com and show your team spirit. Northern Lehigh Team Sales is not affiliated with Northern Lehigh Sporting Goods. Scott Signs and Printing, your preferred family-owned and operated printing and signage company, is now pleased to offer Big Heads as part of their large format printing services. We can transform any of your photos into colorful life-size wall graphics that can be put anywhere in your home or office without damaging your walls. Let us turn your favorite memories into big celebrations without having to spend big bucks. Remember, Scott Signs and Printing, for all your printing and signage needs. Plan your next Pocono getaway with a stay at Country Inn & Suites on Interchange Road in Lehighton. Enjoy one of our fabulous suites with a separate bedroom and living area. It's the perfect getaway for the entire family with an indoor pool and hot tub, as well as fitness center and complimentary hot breakfast every morning. You can even bring your family pet. Country Inn & Suites offers romantic getaway specials with Whirlpool Suites, candles, and flowers available. Plan your getaway now. Call Country Inn & Suites at 610-379-5066.
It's the Mountain Valley Boys Basketball Championship 21-20. West leads Pleasant Valley, and they're trying to, each of these teams, join this list. Stroudsburg has the most Mountain Valley Championships, six, including the first five. Whitehall and Parkland in there. You remember when the uh, Lehigh Valley schools were uh, in the Mountain Valley. Remember, Stroudsburg uh, won the first championship uh, with that situation. They beat Easton, and then it was uh, Whitehall, Parkland twice, Pleasant Valley's championship in 03. And then look at the uh, last bunch, Pocono Mountain East and Pocono Mountain West have combined for eight of the last nine mm -hmm. championships. How about that? Yeah, a little dominance there by both those clubs uh, kind of taking over. It was interesting. Of course, West has won five of the last eight. Mm -hmm. Well, always interesting to see Parkland in there. We mentioned that on the way up, a little trivia-type question always uh, that they played in the MVC back in those days. You see them uh, in the 101 and 102 uh, time frame, and uh, a lot of people don't remember that, and they're kind of unusual since they played down in the Lehigh Valley Conference. Some of the action in that first half, I'll tell you, was right there. I mean, you got off the bench and a lot of help that coach uh, Brad Pencil has, and that's Sean Cooper, the 5'10 junior, hitting that jump. And boy, what an entry pass by Vic to find Dixon. We know effectiveness off the boards, but he'll give you some offense too. But this kid, he gives you everything. That's number three, all everything, Eric Vic. Quick stop, jumper straight up, nice touch on it. Hey, leads the pack, what a reverse layup. Hey, how did he make that? He was over the baseline, still able to reverse uh, shot off the glass. What a difficult shot that is. We go to the other side. This kid had eight points in the first half. That's one Devin Howard doing the, the basically running the offense for this Bear Ball Club transition game off the breakaway. Hey, voids the defender off the glass. Great focus on the iron there. Kick back to Devin. Boy, what an extension. See the follow through helped to guide it through the iron, having a great first half with eight points. Uh, that's Devin Howard. It's a one-point lead for Pocono Mountain West here in the Mountain Valley Championship. You know, the uh, Bears have a lot to gain beside the uh, championship here. If Pleasant Valley loses, they're in a pigtail. They're all the way down at the 10 seed. Should they win, they would end up being the number two seed in the uh, District 11 uh, tournament. Pocono Mountain West would be the number one seed with a uh, victory. Of course, Pleasant Valley would avoid a pigtail game should they uh, win the Mountain Valley Championship. Remember, uh, league champs go to the top of the uh, list. Liberty and Parkland are playing for the LVC Championship tonight. There are your leading scorers. Vic and Howard leading all scorers with nine each. Dixon and Cooper with four. And then Pleasant Valley has spread the twos across the board. They kind of spread the wealth, and Devin Howard kind of leading the way. And... Uh Got to get more involved. And you know what, what I'm surprised? They got to get that big guy more involved. That is one Marquise Brown uh, was active for a while, but boy, doing a good job defensively and forcing them away from the basket. Neither team has really shot it lights out so far tonight, especially from beyond the arc. And Pleasant Valley, as we might have thought, leads in reboundings by three with those uh, big guys inside. Pocono West leads by one. Let's go to Mark. All right, here with West Coach Brad Pesel. I know your kids like to run. Did you, did, you try, did you try to pick up the pace at all in the second half? Yeah, we've been trying. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not disappointed with our defensive effort. You know, we just we shot poorly. And, um, you know, when you shoot poorly, that's the amount of points you're going to score. So, you know, as far as trying to pick up the pace, yeah, we're gonna, you know, obviously we're going to try to pick it up a little bit. But you know, I'm all right with the way the pace of this game is going. I'm, I'm fine with it. We just got to start making some shots. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Coach Pencil uh, wanting better offensive execution. That's his only concern, really, from the first half, guys. Yeah, I, I, Coach Pencil's exactly right. I mean, nothing going as far as percentage offensive shooting is concerned. And uh, uh, got to get back uh, with some balls that will fall through the hoop for him. Had good selection, but uh, nothing falling, so... Not their normal offensive output in the first half. Bob Boney with 21. O'Neill, Battle, Vic, Wiggins, and Brown. Those were your Mountain Valley All-Stars. 
the first team. Of course, Vic, the MVP of the Mountain Valley Conference. Pleasant Valley will have the basketball to start the third quarter, down by a point. They used a 9-0 run to take the lead. They led a couple of times there before settling for a one-point deficit. And the Bears will open with the basketball. Looks like their first five out there. Sharp will take the three and miss. Jones grabs the rebound but steps out of bounds. It is Jones and Brown, Herbeck, Howard, and Sharp on the floor for Pleasant Valley. For West, it will be Dixon and Vick, Wiggins, Hardy, and Baptiste. So both starting fives are on the floor. 2-2-1, full court zone pressure by the Bears. Wiggins, and they're going to call the push on Sekou Jones. Yeah, it's his first. And the first this half on PV. Hardy on the drive and the floater Jordan Hardy with four points a nice ball fake this initially start that the dribble penetration by Hardy Brown on the nice look from Seku Jones Marquise Brown cutting to the basket yep. he has four points nice play there coming off the high post Jones finds him oh, oh, oh wow Whoa, Miller. Nice bank shot by Jordan Hardy. Six points for Hardy along with his four rebounds. Sharp in trouble gets it to Howard. Howard pushes to Jones. And Devon Howard has to take a look. Howard drives and they'll call the charge. That's his second. Always gets a little... Uh Disagreement from the crowd, a call like that. It's very difficult for the officials. That's a uh, strictly a judgment type call. Hardy this time for three. And Sekou Jones rebounds for Pleasant Valley. Herbeck for three, throws it long. Wiggins with the rebound, and West wants to run. Wiggins with the pull-up jumper. He back rims it. Howard rebounds. Howard runs into Hardy. No call as they go to the floor, and it's Dixon who grabs it. Dixon on the drive, tries to go over under, hits the brakes and scores. Well, it's kind of West Panther basketball. They like that haphazard play. Things going their way, and... Uh, come up with a big one somehow Joe Wiggins weaving his way through the defense to make it look kind of easy not a, not a lot of room there Bob but to manage to score and uh, puts West up by five big goal I think as far as momentum is concerned too and Pleasant Valley calls a timeout I don't know if they call the timeout to stem the tide or to get a word with the officials about that uh, last play that they wanted a foul on. There's Brad Pencil, 24 years, 445 victories for Coach Pencil. Six conference championships, one in the MVC. He also has that one with the Centennial League back in 1992 before the Mountain Valley Conference became a conference in 94-95. This is the ninth title game in the conference for coach pencil and with his five championships he has three runners up two of them came at pocono mountain let's go to mark Ankowski uh, not happy with his team's lack of hustle he said they're beating you up and down the court both ways he said you know he has I had to call this time out to scold you guys because i don't want to have to do this again so um Kind of like a father talking to his children, you know, letting him know that he doesn't want to see him get out hustled by West the rest of this game, guys. Back to you. Yeah, I think good time out at the right time by Coach Piankowski, Bob. Marquise Brown rolls over. Because generally being uh, just out hustled to the ball, 
the start of the third, so he kind of advises troops they better get their act together. For those of you who don't realize, there was one Pocono Mountain High School that was this one before the 2002-2003 season, and Brad Pencil was the coach here. There's a three by Wiggins missed, and Brown rebounds. Then they split. Brad Pencil went over to West as both coach and athletic director in the 02-03 season. Look. Nice look inside from Sharp to Seku Jones for his first basket. And then Sharp nearly makes the steal, but it will stay with West. I like that effort, huh? Aggressive play going to the ball, Sharp in one end and now on the other end. Great blue collar type work ethic. Boy, that was a casual pass from Vic. Seku on the steal. He hits the finger roll. Two quick baskets for Seku Jones. Cuts it to a one point game again. And Jones, the prize is coming his way. There's a lazy pass by Vic. Vic for Hardy. Hardy on the drive. Gets around the defender and gets fouled by Sharp. That'll be the second on Ryan Sharp. It's the third this half on Pleasant Valley. And Hardy will go to the line. Let's watch Hardy. Goes baseline a little shake and bake type move opens up the baseline for him picks up the foul hardy hands the second it's a two point west lead seven points for jordan hardy here's sharp on the wing hardy all over him he pushes it in to Marquise Brown. Brown makes some room and gets fouled. They're going to get Dixon inside. That is his second personal. Yeah, he's going to be tough to handle, or will be, and always is tough to handle in the low paint area. There's big Marquise Brown box. The problem is they double him up inside. It's the entry pass, getting the ball to him. Once he gets his hands on the ball, he's tough to stop. Sean Cooper returns for West. Baptiste is out. Using body well, moving people all over the place. Double zero, the spaceman. And Brown gets the bounce on that one. And it's again a one-point game. Hardy outside Wiggins. Wiggins steps up, misses the floater, and it's batted out by Dixon. Still halfway through this third, and not productive on the offensive end. Uh, kind of starting this third as they finish the second. That is the West Panthers on the offense. Here is Sharp with a baseline. Jones, Herbeck, Howard. Whoa. Howard runs right smack into Jordan Hardy. Hardy got to the spot quickly. It'll be an offensive, offensive foul on Devon Howard, his third. for three, Sean Cooper from downtown, just his fifth of the season, and it's a four-point lead. Balance on their offense, always talking big high score, Wiggins house, but hey, how about the others? They all contribute on this Panther ball club. Jones has that one batted into the backcourt. Sharp runs it down, and they will actually get a foul here on Wiggins, and that is his third. That kind of unnecessary again, that way in the back court there. No bearing on the play at all. I don't think he had a chance to get it. He's more valuable on the floor, and there he picks up his third. I don't think Coach Brad Pencil's happy with that one. There you see it. Jones, who are cutting her back to the nice. left side, Hosier. And that's great defense on the recovery by Dixon. Now there's a pile up. Out at the top of the key, 
And the tie-up will go to West. Absolutely right, Bob. How defense came over quickly. Boy, those guys can get their white shirts. Look like it was unmolested going in for the layup. Uh-uh, not according to West Panthers. They get there quick. Pleasant Valley has seven turnovers this quarter. Cooper tries to go baseline for Dixon. Ooh, zone look to three by the Bears. Boy, confused where to go. No. Dixon has that knocked away. Wiggins has it. And now Vic. We mentioned Pleasant Valley with seven turnovers this quarter. They had seven in the entire first half. Dixon, nice little step through. Stop. And he gets fouled. So Dixon will go to the line. And they will get Brian Sharp on the foul. That was nice by uh, Dixon coming off the baseline, finding the open spot in that zone and a nice entry pass from Eric Vick out at the point to get it to Dixon. He has that quick move inside, going strong to the basket. Dixon misses the first. That was the third foul on Sharp. So he will leave, and so will Marquise Brown as John Pazienza and Lance Robinson come back in. Dixon is three for four from the line, and the lead is five. Knocked away, stolen by Eric Vick. Vick to the baseline, Vick to the reverse. Vick with the basket is first of the second half. Well, we have passes playing defense. Things can change quickly. Got to take care of the basketball. That is the Bears. And now Pleasant Valley wants a timeout with 2.13 left in the third. All of a sudden, they are down seven. Let's watch this. Vic takes it away. Quick move again. A nice reverse layup. Yeah, Coach Pienkowski, Bob, doesn't want to let things get out of hand here and have the West Panthers... Uh, the momentum swinging their way, making a run here, going up by seven, so he quickly calls a timeout to settle his, uh, his guys down. And, uh, hey, take care of the basketball. We beat this press through most of the game. Let's do the same thing, but uh, let's settle down at this point. Want to remind you that coming up tonight at 10.30, it will be the Colonial League Girls Basketball Championship game between Northwestern and Southern Lehigh. That's tonight at 10.30. Here on TV 13 in HD, high definition 613. Glad to have you along, along with Bob Milkfee, Mark McKeon, our director Joe Campbell, and the entire Blue Ridge crew. Ken Piankowski's Pleasant Valley Bears down by seven. He's in his 18th year. He's been in five MVC title games. Hasn't had a lot of luck against Coach Pencil. They've been the back-to-back -back finals. Let's go to Mark for a moment. Yeah, Ken Piankowski telling his team, you know, they had a little run. That's fine. Just don't let it snowball. He goes, you got to come meet the passes when they come to you. And on the other hand, Brad Pencil telling his team, hey, we got to box out. Let's go for some steals. He knows his team's uh, playing really well right now. Wants them to keep it up. Back to you. Well, Herbeck had two chances and can't convert. Back the other way comes Hardy. He goes down. Loose ball grabbed by Dixon. And Dixon runs it out of the pack. <laughs> And Vic will step back and reset. Wiggins off the screen. He goes to the floor. Herbeck grabs it. Herbeck spins and then tries to back tap it out. But it was actually tipped by Darren Dixon. And it will stay with Pleasant Valley. Here comes Zach Deegan and Robinson leads. So it's Deegan and Hozier. Howard. Brown and Pazienza. And then now they're going to bring a towel out because we may have a little moisture on the floor. Yeah, kind of in that area where they're uh, drying up top of this, our elbow area on that end of the court. Uh, Seems as several of the players sort of hit the floor here in the last few minutes. So a wise decision to sort of check that out and clean up the area. Deegan. Pazienza. He'll spot up for three and back limit. Wiggins has the rebound, and Brown goes over the top. That is Brown's second personal. 
Well, you can't lose composure at this point of the game if you're the Bears. Just got to, hey, you're down by seven. It's not over. Got a whole quarter to play besides the 117 left in this one. So, uh, got to settle down the troops. One ten remains here in the third. Fick out near half court. Deacon comes out to start a five count. Bob, situations like this too, you look for leadership, not only from Coach Piankowski on the bench and your coaches uh, generally, but you gotta have a team leader out on the floor as far as the Bears are concerned. Hardy with it. 42 seconds left in the third. Wiggins right in front of us. And Vic. They're going to try to run this whole thing out. He gets hit with a double team. Now Hardy has it. A little alley-oop huh, for the last play. That back three line for Pleasant Valley isn't giving, giving much backdoor room, though. Yeah, plus you got Posse ends in there at 6'8", and Brown at 6'4", so it'll be tough to go by. Under 10 now. Wiggins for Vic. Vic for three over Brown. No. And on the rebound, I think they're going to get Wiggins going over the top. There were already two players involved in the rebound, and then Vic joined and picks up his fourth personal wow. foul. That's big, and again, kind of an unnecessary type foul. I think uh, Bears generally had position underneath, and the Wiggins comes from behind. Three-quarter court shot by Deegan will be, uh, or Hozier, rather, will be well short, and that's the end of the third. Well, I think Coach Piancaz is going to emphasize the fact you're only down by seven. You're hanging in there. You're still playing pretty good defense, can control of the ball, be selective in your shooting. We're still within range. That's it for three on the Palmerton Garage Door scoreboard. It's West 34 and Pleasant Valley 27. Blue crew always oh, I love the love to see that, student huh? sections. A little close up there of uh, Mr. Bill Pencil, Brad Pencil's father, the all-time great leader of Banger in his day, coaching at Banger Club. Let's go to Mark. Hey, guys, normally you, you see West, you think of a fast break, push a team, and Brad Pencil just told his guys there in that last huddle, you know, hey, be patient. Let's get good shots. I don't want to see any one pass then just throwing up a shot. So he wants his team to be very disciplined here in the fourth quarter with a seven-point lead. Back to you. Devon Howard has picked up his fourth personal foul, so you now have four on Howard on one side and four on Wiggins on the other. Hardy in the corner. Sekou Jones on him. Now Hardy drives, and they're going to get the offensive. Well, he went flying in there. Brad Pencil does not like it. I'll tell you what, though, Bob. Boy, I thought Hardy had the avenue open on the baseline. Look at that. But what a recovery by, by Jones from behind. And then look at Marquise Brown. Marquise Brown holding his position. That was a good job in there defensively. TV with the ball. There's Herbeck. Herbeck drops it off. Sekou Jones. And Jones is fouled by Hardy. And that's now three on Hardy. 
See, when they get in the low area, the low box area, Marquise Brown is such a threat. And this kid, too, at 6'3", his leaping ability, his quickness, really tough for the uh, Panther Ball Club to stop him. But, boy, getting it in there, that's the difficulty. Jones misses the first. Watch it here. It is the Jones strong move, baseline, swipe at the ball, constitutes a foul almost every time. One of two for Sekou Jones. It is a six-point West lead. Wiggins, by the way, is in there with his four fouls. It's Baptiste and Wiggins. Dixon, Vic, and Hardy on the floor for West. That's knocked away by Herbeck. Now off of Wiggins and run down by Hardy. And the West Panthers will keep it in their end. Dixon tries to duck under and travels. Well, opportunity for the Bears make a stop, convert on the other end. Hosier across to Sharp, now Herbeck. Jones wanted to go inside to Brown, instead steps up and comes up short. He gets his own rebound, puts it back up and misses. Brown comes up with a rebound and he scores. Effort inside by the space man, Marquise Brown. Wow, what effort, what work. That cuts it to two. Hey, big goal, I'll tell you. Vic that on the little a... bump off and they'll get Herbeck holding him up with the arm. That's the third foul on Dan Herbeck. It's Herbeck, Hozier, Sharp, Brown, and Jones on the floor for Pleasant Valley. And Mr. Everything for this Panther ball club, MVP, NBC. Great extension on that uh, first foul. Charlotte, watch the foul through. Nice touch. 13 points for Eric Vick. He missed his first two free throws of the night and has since hit his last four. Sharp across, Herbeck, Sekou Jones. Herbeck for three. Back rims that. Nice rebound, however, by Sharp. Sharp steps out, wanted to square up for the three and couldn't. This one tipped away by Wiggins. Wiggins to the other end, misses, but Hardy is there, the trailer, to put it back up and in. Well, Wiggins gets it started, Bob, with the interception, just takes it up and stuff, but Hardy, effort, blue collar play, follow up. And a 30-second timeout called by Pleasant Valley. Well, again, a turnover, Bill, I'll tell you what, will create the offense for this uh, West Panther ball club. One Joe Wiggins, as quick as he is, get into the ball. you got to be careful when you release that thing. And then great follow-up by Hardy, though. That's a great effort. Wiggins hit his first shot of the night. He hasn't hit one since. Mm. He's 0 for 7 since. How about that? Of course, you know what? Uh, being straddled with foul trouble, too, Bob, might have taken a lot of his offense away from him, trying to take care in that regard. It will be Pleasant Valley basketball with five minutes and 42 seconds left in the Mountain Valley season. The winner will get one of the top two seeds in the district tournament. The ball hit the bottom of the basket, they say, not the back. The back would have been a violation, but Pleasant Valley turns it over anyway. Pocono West would be the number one seed in District 11 playoffs should they win. And then the winner of Liberty and Parkland would be the number two seed down the Lehigh Valley Conference Championship. Should Pleasant Valley win, they would be two. And the Liberty Parkland winner would be number one. Pocono Mountain West has four timeouts left. Pleasant Valley with just one. Vic on the drive, and they'll get a blocking foul on Marquise Brown, and that will be his third. So this is
That's where the, uh, generally speaking, the Panther offense is so effective, especially the guy that's on the line. They go in the man-to-man -man situation, they open up the middle of the court, they spread that defense out, enables him to take advantage of his quickness, and his dribble penetration puts him on the line. Good read by this kid. See the space? Spread the defense out with that man-to-man, -man, and then Vic takes advantage. Vic has now hit his last six free throws, and it is a 10-point West lead. With just over five minutes left, Sekou Jones gets hit nice by a double team and finds her back open underneath. Good vision, getting the ball inside. That cuts it back to single digits at eight. Wiggins looking to dribble out of trouble, and he does, and it's Hardy outside. Vic on the drive, tries to drop it off inside to Baptiste, and he is helped out by the Pleasant Valley foul, and it'll be the fourth on Marquise Brown. Nice pass by Vic to find Baptiste inside bomb, but boy, I tell you what, watch the conversion of the defense. See three blue shirts, nobody's back. Two for the stop, because it's a stop ball first. Someone's got to slide into the lane position to prevent that bounce pass in. And you have to be aware somebody's behind you. Got to look, communicate. Someone else has to make you aware that there's somebody baseline. There's the first point for Baptiste. And now the second. Two free throws for Baptiste. Pushes the lead back to 10 with four and a half minutes left here in the four. Now you can credit Baptiste too, Bob, for getting in good position on the baseline to, to accept that pass. Sharp. And now Howard. Howard to the baseline. Tries to find her back. Sekou Jones now. Jones, the floater misses. And they're going to get that piece on the foul, and that'll be his third. That tough trying to get around double zero in there. Once he gets established his position, uh, hard to stop. Well, he's determined, Bob. Look at that. The big guy is determined inside. They're going to get a foul on Vic on the inbound. And that draws the ire of the West crowd. And he will go over and talk to official Frank D'Angelo about it. That is the first on Eric Vic. Marquise Brown at the line. Use of body, double zero, spaceman makes room, picks up the foul. One more for Marquise Brown. He gets his own rebound. And foul. Ten for Marquise Brown. It's a seven-point game. Fundamental mistake. Don't block out shooter after miss, but great fundamental follow-up on the miss foul by Marquise. Vic. Vic on the drive, the pull-up, and a block by Herbeck. The rebound down to Seku Jones. Lots of time on the clock. Howard for Sharp. Wiggins has to watch. He has four fouls. Patience and selectiveness with the basketball. Wiggins with four. Brown with four, both on the floor. Howard for three. Got it. Devon Howard with his third three-pointer. That's his first basket of the second half. How about that? But show complete confidence from long range. And the timeout for Pocono Mountain West with 321 left. And West has seen their double-digit lead reduced to four. Well, you got a fired up bear ball club at this point, Bob. Watch this. Pass to Howard and he nails that thing, and that's a big goal. But I'll tell you what, I think it was all instigated as far as this momentum factor for the Bears. The big guy inside showing great effort and determination. That is one Marquise Brown, double zero to Spaceman. Don't forget the 11th annual Perryman Kenglevitz All Star Games will be Monday, March 25th at East Roundsburg University. The girls at six, the boys. At 7.30, the 
Greater Pocono Region and Mountain Valley All-Stars will take part. It will all help the fight against childhood cancer. Always a great day. Always enjoy covering that game. We've done it for years now, Bob. And, uh, such a worthy cause. Here is Vic. Vic trying to make a move, nothing there, so he pulls it back out. Kind of a smart move, boy, because the big guy, Marquise Brown, waiting for him in the paint. Here's Wiggins against Howard. Howard is also on the floor with four fouls. And they kick it back out to Hardy. Four each on Wiggins for West and Brown and Howard for Pleasant Valley. Two and a half minutes left here in the fourth quarter. No decision now, Coach Pienkowski. When do you foul? That's just good. Yeah, you know what? That was an extreme aggressive defense by Howard to cause Wiggins not to get the ball on the floor and turn over Bears hands. Here's Herbeck, out for Sharp, Howard, Jones, Sharp, Herbeck, the little head fake, the drive, the floater, doesn't get the bounce, the putback by Gavon Howard is in, it's a two-point game. Just banging the boards, not giving up, relentless pressure under their own glass. Two minutes left in the fourth, it's a two-point West lead. There's Hardy with it. Goes back door for Vic. He's the guy that got here most of the year. Leading scorer, MVP of the league. Put it in his hands. Strong move to the basket. Let's watch it here. Baseline cut. Bango off the glass. Not an easy one. Fired up, Eric Vic. It's the fourth foul on Herbeck. Vic misses after six straight made three oh, goes and oh, goes wow. the other way and lays it in. It's Devin. again a uh, two-point game. Bob, Devin Howard flying in there. How he control that thing so soft off the glass? PV, Excellent shot. PV used an 8 run to get back in the game, and they're down just two. What a finish, huh? Vic. The step back oh from the line basket. Eric Vick with 19. It's a four-point lead, and Brad Pinsel gets a quick timeout. The big guy wants the ball in his hand. Maybe not big in stature, only listed at 5'9", Eric Vick, but big of heart. He wants the ball in his hand, goes strong to the basket. That is a big, big goal. That what you call an MVP play? Absolutely. That's why you give it to him. Look at that floater. Nice touch. Right over the top of the iron. When it comes down to it, Eric Vick, the type of guy who's going to get to the big basket. Hey, don't forget, coming up on Monday, we'll have our Sports Scene 13 tournament preview show. It'll be from 7 to 9. We'll open up the phone lines. Dr. Bob will answer all yes, your right, questions. Sure. We'll take your comments and, of course, your predictions on the District 11 playoffs. That's this Monday, 7 o'clock, and the next night, the District 11 tournament begins. I will refer all my questions to one Bob and one Mark and one Brian. How's that? Yeah, right. Can I be the moderator? You know, you sit okay, there like it. No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're the expert. Right, sure. Coming down to the one-minute mark of the fourth quarter. One thing, I, by four. one thing I will tell you, I like the game. <laughs> Here's Howard. Howard on the drive to pull up the floater. Oh, misses. Oh, oh. Vic rebounds, and then he is tied up. The possession arrow will give it to West, and Vic took uh, something to the forehead or the side of the eye. Well, opportunity by Howard there. Good penetration. Went up nice over the top of the defenders. 
Seemed like a nice touch that hit hard off the back of the iron. Now Vic's trying to still shake that out. He came over to the bench, and I think they said, do you want to come out? And he said, no way. <laughs> That's right. That smarts you to see stars. Not that you got hit in the head. Sometimes you get hit in the eye and see the stars. Wiggins has it knocked away, but they'll call the foul on Seiku Jones, and that will be his second, and it will send Wiggins to the line. Now, Wiggins has not been to the line tonight, but he is one of the better West free throw shooters at 74%. And that's one reason you have him in the game at this time, Bob. Also the fact he's been their leader, both of there with an Eric Vick. His ability to handle the basketball. The foul line bongo. Wiggins will have one more. There's Stacy Perryman, head coach of the MDC champion Pocono Mountain West Girls. We are the champions. West trying to make it a double title tonight. Here comes PV. Howard nice. the pull up at the free Very throw nice. line hits. 17 for Howard. He has nine here in the fourth quarter. A great decision by Howard not to challenge the defense. Here's Vic. You don't want to foul him, but they do. Herbeck gets the foul. Well, you're not going to have much of a choice at this stage of the game, Bob, because he's going to be handling the ball 99.9% .9 of the time for these Panthers, and rightly so. That's five on Dan Herbeck, so he is done. How about Devon Howard? Nine points here in the fourth quarter. He's hit four of his last five field goals. One of those was a three-pointer earlier this quarter. No, and I like that last uh, make he had, the last goal, Bob. Why? I mean, there were two defenders in front of him. Some guys would try to challenge the defenders, break through there, maybe offensive foul. Rightly so, discipline stopped, took the little jumper, converted. The last time that a school had both the boys and girls championship was 2003, Pleasant Valley. Pocono Mountain West trying to be the first since then to do it. Vic hits one of two. He has 20 points. And the Panthers call a full timeout with 23.9 seconds left in the fourth. Up four. Well, can't waste too much time bringing the ball up and then get a good shot to watch uh, Coach Piankowski set up some play in that huddle for a quick release and uh, hoping that they convert early, get into pressure. Maybe have to possibly foul, see if they can make the interception first, possibly foul, put them on the line, force them to hit the foul shot to win the game. Don't forget, coming up tonight at 10.30 is the Colonial League Girls Championship between Northwestern and Southern Lehigh. And then we have a good morning and afternoon of basketball tomorrow. All these games will be replayed. Pleasant Valley, Pocono Mountain, West Boys Championship at 10.00. Pleasant Valley Pocono Mountain West Girls Championship at 1 and the Colonial League Girls Northwestern and Southern Lehigh again at 3 tomorrow afternoon here on TV 13 and of course HD High Definition 613. There's a blocking foul on Vic that is his second and it will send Howard to the line. Uh, Coach Brad Pencil lived it I think with that call and uh, Felt had sideline completely uh, blocked. Let's watch it here. Official Strobel feels that Eric Vick moved in front of the uh, movement of one Devin Howard and uh, puts Howard on the line. I didn't think he got to the spot in time. He was a little late, I think, getting that way. Howard hits the first. It's a huge free throw for Devon Howard, his first free throw of the night. Foul shot's critical, of course, Bob, but of course, foul was critical. Why stops the clock with 20 seconds remaining? 
He doesn't get the Brown. second, but he gets his own rebound. Misses the putback. Brown had it, lost it. Vic comes up with it. Vic goes down over Brown, and they'll call Marquis Brown on the foul, and that is his fifth. Well, no, I thought that might have been a blessing in disguise for Devin Howard missing that second one because they are in a position for the putback on the missed foul but failed to materialize that way. Bodies flying all over the place. One Marquise Brown has to leave the game. Vic is at the line. He will shoot two. The Panthers are in the double bonus. They lead by three. Pazienza comes in to replace Marquise Brown. Watch the action here. I mean, bodies all over the place. Marquise Brown. Vic hits the first. Picks up the foul. One more for Eric Vic. Two huge free throws for Eric Vick. The lead is five with 12 seconds left. Here's Howard. He needs a quick one. Howard for three. No. It's Dixon with the rebound to the floor, and there is a tie-up with four seconds left. It will stay with Pleasant Valley. Little action here of late, huh? Bodies on the floor going at each other. Boy, championship play here up at the Pocono Mountain East. TV inbounds, the three try by Robinson, no, the ball is loose and that will end it, West is your champion. Should we just watch? <laughs> I'll tell you what, we got a sandal on the floor. Someone lost some footwear out there with some student in their excitement to get down there. Not only did all the fans and the cheerleaders come out, but also the girls team because they celebrate the first girls boys championship for a single school since 2003. Hey, it's always nice to see the excitement after a championship to win like that and uh, great school spirit and uh, well hey what can you say girls PV I should say the uh, Pokemon Mountain West girls MVC champions Pokemon Mountain West boys MVC champions so the Panthers do it twice tonight. The girls win the championship in game one. The boys take the title in game two, 50 to 45. The boys final in a, an excellent basketball game as the coaches shake hands afterwards. Hey, a little threat for the Pleasant Valley boys bomb and Coach Piankowski. What a battle they gave his uh, Pocono uh, Mountain West uh, team. This game was anybody's up until the last uh, seconds of play. Great effort on both teams' part. And I believe Mark is ready with the Panthers. All right, Brad Pencil, three in a row for you guys. It was tough here tonight against Pleasant Valley. It was. Pleasant Valley played great. Yeah, it was a great game. Just real happy for our kids. Not a lot was expected of our kids, at least from you know, us. I know when people expect too much because it's West basketball, these kids in my opinion, really overachieved, and I'm real happy for them. I know you told me about midseason, the difference between this team and some of the other teams they were playing is these kids expected to win the games they were in, and they, they, they made the plays down the stretch again tonight. They do. They, they just they find a way to win games. You know, I, don't, you know, I don't know what it is. I, I guess it's just our tradition in basketball, but they find ways to win the game. You know, some, we didn't do some things well, but Pleasant Valley had a lot to do with that, but we did things well enough. You know, to win the basketball game, and um, you know, I, like I said, I'm just, I'm real happy for the kids because they did a really nice job the whole year. 
Well, now you go for back-to-back -back district championships. Uh, good luck with that stretch of the season there. We're going to need some luck, but, hey, I told the kids now we start, you know, we start districts, and we are the defending champs, so hopefully uh, hopefully we can play well in district tournament. All right, thanks a lot, okay. Coach. Grab a couple of your players here. Eric Vick, uh, Jordan Hardy joining me now. Eric, this isn't the first time I saw you knock down a lot of free throws in a championship game. You did it against Parkland last year. He did it again here tonight. I mean, free throws is... It's big. We practice it a lot, and, you know, it pays off on the court. They tested you guys a lot here tonight, and, and you responded when you had to down the stretch. I mean, my team relies on me to hit a big shot or to do anything. I rely on them. It's just, you know, if it comes down to it, if I have to take it, then I'll do it. Three in a row must feel pretty good for you guys. It feels great. It feels great. All right, Jordan Hardy will bring you in here now. Tell you what, your team as a whole doesn't have a lot of size, but a lot of you guys play bigger than you really are, and you, yeah, that came up big tonight. Pleasant Valley had a lot of height advantage on you. Yeah, it did. So we just tried to work and practice every day, boxing out, doing drills for hours, just boxing out. We go practices where we just box out because we want to get it together because we don't want to lose because it just rebounds. Coach says if we don't rebound, if we lose off an offensive rebound from the free throw line, we got to do sprinted practice. So we don't want to do sprinted practice, so we do what we got to do in practice. This has always been considered a running team, but you guys have shown you can play the slower pace if need be, like tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we run a lot because we're not, we don't have the size that everybody else has. So we have to rely on what we have and with the speed. So speed kills. Chris, three straight championships. Congratulations, Jordan. Thank you, sir. Well, it's a good night to be a Panther, I guess. The girls team and the boys team celebrating the MVC championships. Guys, back to you. This is the 11th year of Pocono Mountain West. Nine times they have won 20 or more games, including this year, as they go to 20 wow. and four. And this is their seventh straight. Wow. And there's the championship trophy. But look at the scoreboard, too. I mean, we mentioned this uh, during the game. Uh, 62, point, 62 points per game with this uh, Pocono Mountain West ball club. And uh, Pleasant Valley comes in and holds them to 50. So making a good effort defensively and uh, just a good all-round effort by the Pleasant Valley Bears and like I mentioned the gesture I mean they allowed them to celebrate we saw the whole commotion down at one end of the court after the buzzer went off and the Pleasant Valley Bears just left the court momentarily but you know they have the traditional handshake normally after a game between the both ball clubs but they waited till all the celebration was over left the floor let uh uh, Panther, uh, Pleasant, I, boy, yeah, right. Pocono Mountain West get into their celebration, and once they were out of that, came back to the floor, led by Coach Piankowski, went through the line, shook everyone's hand, congratulations. Great gesture, Coach Piankowski and his Pleasant Valley Bears, I thought. All right, let's tie up the loose ends of the night. Don't forget, Monday, we'll prep you for the district tournament. From 7 to 9, we'll have the Sports Scene 13 tournament preview show here on TV 13 and HD 613. We'll go two hours, open up the phone lines. Hope you'll join us. Give us your predictions, your thoughts about the uh, tournament. And then starting on Tuesday night and Wednesday night, we'll have the first rounds of the District 11 basketball tournament. We'll have a fortnight of wild basketball as the uh, championships will be decided in uh, two weeks, two weeks from tonight and two weeks from tomorrow. We really? thank Bob Bailey for uh, his hospitality here at Pocono Mountain East. We thank Dan Snyder for his great stats one more time here courtside. Really enjoyed this night of basketball, Bob. Girls' championship, that game, this game, what an exciting finish to this one. And looking forward to seeing you Monday night. It should be fun. Pocono Mountain West wins the girls' and boys' championships tonight here in the Mountain Valley. In the boys' title game, it's Pocono Mountain West 50 and Pleasant Valley 45. For Bob Milfi, Mark McKeon, our director Joe Campbell, and the entire Blue Ridge crew, I'm Bob Capasso. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Rest up for the district tournaments.
if one of the safety eyes is out, that means that it is sensing an obstruction and will not allow the door to close. Uh, very simply, there's normally a little screw to adjust, to loosen up, or just very simply clean the eyes off to where you have bright light on both the right side and the left side, and that normally would take care of your problems. For more quick tips, visit Palmerton Garage Doors at palmertongaragedoors.com. When every moment matters and a hand reaches out, when someone gives blood and a life is saved, that moment when heartbreak turns to hope, you're there through the American Red Cross. Every day, the Red Cross responds to nearly 200 neighborhood emergencies, and your support makes it possible. Use this moment to join us today. Visit redcross.org. Would you trust a blocked artery to a plumber? Then why trust the health of your network to outdated technology? Connect at the speed of light with Penteladata's state-of-the-art true fiber optic network, offering the smartest, most reliable data connections to keep operations running stronger than ever before. That's why more doctors and business professionals trust their company to Penteladata. When choosing a provider, get a second opinion. You'll be glad you did. Penteladata, your recommended source of fiber. A much colder President's Day weekend on the way. I'm Carl Curran. Coming up tonight at 10, we've enjoyed beautiful conditions these last two days, but a sharp change already underway outside with colder temperatures and even some light snow. I'll fill you in on the rest of the forecast tonight at 10 on the Night Report on TV 13. For 23 years from the summit to the chalet, if it's action you want, it's action you'll get. The Mountaintop Ski and Snowboard Series returns with the best snow riding from around the globe. If it takes your breath away, we'll take you there. Bringing you a front row seat to some of the most amazing sights on the planet. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride with world-class athletes as your guides. The Mountaintop Ski and Snowboard Series is brought to you by Micah Heli Skiing. Rated best heli skiing in Canada. Island Lake Cat Skiing, Ski the Legend, Horizon Yacht Charters, Your Sailing Escape to the Caribbean, and the Surf Rider Foundation, protecting oceans, waves, and beaches since 1984. in the interior of British Columbia have been getting pounded day after day with massive amounts of snow. And now we're in the midst of what some say is Snowmageddon. Hello, I'm Bob Lagasse, and we're taking you on another epic journey into the White Room. Our first stop is the rugged backcountry of the Cascade Mountain Range in Washington State. We're going heli skiing with North Cascade Heli Ski. <laughs> It's kind of a unique spot. I've been hearing a lot about it before coming here and it's kind of, you know, flat to the east and it seems like a little snow belt with these awesome mountains that rise up out of nowhere it seems. I came off of man-made groomers into deep blower overhead pow and it's just amazing. North Cascade Heli Ski sits on the east side of the majestic Cascade Mountain Range in Washington State. We're a smaller operation that caters to smaller groups. We fly with just uh, four guests per guide per load, so every group is small. And people get to know each other throughout the day. And... and this zone is known for getting tons of snow and having terrain that will bring out the smiles. I'm telling you, this is the Alps of America. Unbelievable. The mountains up here are absolutely awesome. They're made for snowboarding. We get lots of snow. We're able to fly most of the time. I've been skiing nine out of the 10 last days. Being on the east side, we tend to get drier snow than most people expect at the ski areas. First time ever in LA. Stuff. First. Uh, yeah. Ever. 
getting around to ride the 300,000 acres is pretty easy, especially when you're buzzing majestic spires with your powder buddies in the B3. The pilots we use here are very experienced heli-ski pilots. They enjoy taking people out into the winter mountain environment. They're skiers themselves and love the snow, and so they have a good eye for what we're looking for out there. When you have that kind of workforce, you know they're going to put you on the money. Typical heli day will be runs from 2,000 to 2,500 feet or more vertically. Hey folks, there are lots of places in the Poconos to shop for home furnishings, but there's one store that stands out, and their philosophy is we bring the outdoors inside. And they do just that, as you'll see right now when we go out in the open. Out in the Open is brought to you by Dunkelberger Sports Outfitters, Mountain View Realty, the Lake Region, Greentown, and Lighthouse Harbor Marina on Lake Wall and Paul Pack. Get ready, get set, it's time to plunge. That's the Paw Pack Plunge, and it's happening on February 16th at Lighthouse Hard Marina on Lake Wall and Paw Pack. Experience the thrill and the chill of a lifetime. Get your friends and do the group plunge. This is the charity event for the Ledgedale Dive Team and the Taft and Water Rescue Team. You must register and pay a minimum donation of $25. Official Paw Pack Plunge t-shirt, live music, refreshments, heated tent. Information and to register at Lighthouse Harbor Marina, Route 507 Greentown, or go to pawpackplunge.com. Hey folks, welcome to this edition of Out in the Open. I'm Alex Zedock. And I'm Joanne Zedock, and we're coming to you from Dunkelburgers right here in Main Street. Well, we still have a big sale going on. I know. Two of them, actually. That's pretty good, don't you think? Well, we got the red tag sale. Right. We've got the red tag sale, and a lot of winter things are on sale, but... Up to 75% off. That's not bad, is it? No, on winter things. I mean, if you're looking for some uh, winter gear or winter clothes or anything like that, uh, we got a sale to beat all sales, up to 75% off on some of the items. That's right. I saw a lady trying on a hat with the flippers on it. Did you really? She was, she's, this actually looks good on me. With flippers on well, it? You know, those little earmuffs. The earmuffs thing. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then we got another great sale going on also right. over President's Day weekend. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Right. That's a long weekend and plenty of time to shop. It is. <laughs> Whoa, you have to spend $100 worth of, uh, $100, you just spend $100 uh, worth of goods and you get $10 off. Mm -hmm. So $100 or more you spend right. and get $10 off. Now this is not good on guns, ammo, reloading, or licenses. Right. So you can't get your fishing license or those kinds of things. It'll be, okay, ladies, it can be all the really beautiful Carhartt things. That, in fact, they just got some new things in for Carhartt for ladies and pinks and plaids and beautiful. And then also on the air flipper. <laughs> It goes on your head. <laughs> the flipper thing, right? Yeah, you know, I noticed that that there's a lot of good, a lot of nice yeah. stuff for sale, you know, uh, whatever you need for hunting, fishing, boating, camping, mm -hmm. the great outdoors, because you know what? Spring is around the corner. That's right. We keep it's saying coming. that. Well, <laughs> you notice the difference. I, I mean, sure when we had do. this last big snowfall, right. you notice how afterward it was like the streets were cleared a lot yes. faster and it yes. kind of is melting and going away. It, it, there, there's just a difference in the weather and it feels good. So you think the groundhog's right? Um, I saw a sign that I don't believe a groundhog, but I think the groundhog is right. I think we are going to have an early season. Hey, we've got a great show for you. We were out at uh, Van Gorder's Furniture Store up in the Lake Region of the Poconos, across from the, on, on, on Route, is that Route 6 up there? Yes, it right is Route 6, from across the, uh, the high school. From the high school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're into the outdoors and you want to bring the outdoors indoors into your home, um, boy, what a place to uh, what a place to shop! They've got oh. everything up there. Let's show. Let's Absolutely. Show. So don't go away, folks. After these brief messages, we'll be back with a um, little segment from Van Gorder. They had to revive me twice. I was always happy until I started taking drugs. My brother, I don't know who he is now. My son begged me to stop, and I did. 
addiction has no boundaries. At InterVision Treatment Services, we help you take a look inside. Whether at work, home, or school, InterVision not only uncovers the presence of substance abuse, it provides you with the power and resources to recover from it. InterVision Treatment Services in Stroudsburg. Visit us at intervisiondrugtestconsultant.com. The American flag, symbolizing our way of life. Freedom of expression, words we live by. Express yourself with a flag from the flag store on Route 209 in Scioto. Whether it's an American, military, or wide array of garden flags, stop by the flag store and find a way to express yourself to the world. We also carry sports flags to show your team spirit. Give someone you care about a gift from the flag store, as flags make great gifts. Come see our newly expanded showroom on Route 209 in Scioto. The flag store, honoring those who serve. Celebrate your next occasion with an ice cream cake from Claude's Creamery in Palmerton. Choose from our traditional ice cream cakes or design your own. Claude's also has ice cream pies available, like our peanut butter pie. It's never too cold for an ice cream treat. Claude's is open year-round for ice cream, sundaes, milkshakes, and more. Check out our Facebook page and website for specials and flavor of the week. Treat your friends and family to the best ice cream in town. Visit Claude's Creamery in Palmerton. When it comes to something as important as your health, it's good to know there is an expert right around the corner with answers to your questions. We have been serving the Northern Lehigh area with the same dedicated service to our community and your health for over 50 years. Our personal service and medication checkup programs are designed with your specific needs in mind. Bechtel's Pharmacy. Let our family take care of your family. and this is my dad, Max. We do a lot together, so come here and buy anything you want. Good. Hey folks, welcome to uh, Van Gorder's Furniture. We're here at Lake Wall Paul Pack, and with me is uh, Scott Van Gorder. Hi, Alex. We all just met uh, Max and Greg, the fourth and fifth generations of Van Gorder's Furniture. That's fantastic. You know, you know, you've been around for a long time. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, where did the store start? Fifth generation must have been uh, your grandfather. My grandfather, yep. And that was 1936 in downtown Honesdale. And uh, we grew from there. My dad, Don, took over. And eventually we built the store here at Lake Wall and Paul Pack in 1978. In 1978, your dad, I guess, uh, uh, got that through, got that going here. What a great spot, you know. Yeah. This area of the Poconos, uh, as, as you well appreciate, and certainly Joanne and I do, this area of the Poconos is really fantastic. I mean, we got everything we need right here. I mean, what a wonderful place to live and, and, and to work. It's the truth. I mean, rather than congestion and sprawl, we've got open space, you know. Thousands of square miles, well, thousands of acres of woodlands that support healthy wildlife populations, miles and miles of pristine streams and rivers. Uh, no matter where you are around here, you can get away from it all in a matter of minutes. And, and you know, the great thing is that it's a lot of it is, is public land. Yeah. I mean, you can go for a walk on state game lands. We have state forests. Uh, even around the lake itself, you know, all of that area around the lake uh, is public, even though there are houses around the area. A lot of places to go. And we have several lakes here. Yes, and we the do. Delaware River. Yes. So we've got it all. You know, Scott, this is this is really great. We're pretty lucky. And you know, the great thing is that uh, when you come here to Van Gorder's Furniture, and, and it's, it's one of the reasons that, uh, you know, uh, Joanne and I like to come here and, and, and walk around because uh, we were just talking about how great it is outdoors. Actually, uh, you, you really brought the outdoors indoor if people like the outdoors, they certainly would like, you know, what you have here. Well, that's our entire theme, to bring the outdoors inside and uh, to help us to reconnect with nature, even when we are inside. I mean, they, it's a timeless, rugged elegance. Our furniture is not fancy, frilly, or formal. Uh, it's, it's warm and inviting, and it speaks to you and says, put your feet up and relax and uh, enjoy yourself. And not only just the, you know, just the furniture, but I mean, all, everything that goes with it, everything that's accompanied. Now, you said something about the furniture being, uh, you know, that it's not, it's not frilly or fancy. Well, in some cases, I, looking at it from the perspective that I look at it, it some of it looks pretty, pretty fancy to me. I mean, some of it's intric intricately carved. Uh, some of it, you know, has some uh, wonderful wood. Uh, yes. You know, this is the, this is the showcase. 
And one thing I think that we missed is that beside all of that, this furniture is well made. Yes. And, you know, just trying to move it around, folks, you know, to set up a scene and move a chair or move a table, uh, this is rock solid. That's right. You know, we like to think that we use uh, organic, natural elements to create this furniture, and uh, it shows, you know, th there's something about wood, it's warm and inviting, and it makes your home a welcome place. And, you know, it, it's, it's the furniture is uh, m mostly everything in here is American made, which is fantastic. Yeah. Now, uh, where do you go to find this stuff? Okay. I just got back from Nevada. There was a big show out there. Mm -hmm. uh, the next big show is Denver at the end of this month. And then the really big show is down in North Carolina in April. Uh, after that, there's Chicago in September and then back to High Point again in October. So you go um, all over the place to find, a, to find good furniture that suits us. And really, I think we have a collection now that is unsurpassed. If you like rugged lodge style furniture and we're seeing a real renaissance in that kind of furniture and uh, we've got a lineup that's hard to beat. You know Joanna and I have uh, we travel west uh, whenever we can because we like being out in that atmosphere and um, it was surprising when we came in here and saw uh, when we were in the Old Faithful Lodge yeah. and you had the same the same kind of furniture that they have there at the Old Faithful Lodge which is really impressive and if anybody's been out there uh, to the Old Faithful Lodge yeah, I mean it is just it's magnificent the wood and the woodwork yeah. and the chairs that go with it yeah it's fantastic and the tables uh, Old Hickory furnished that dining room in 1904. Now we've got the Old Faithful dining chair here in the store. We can have a look at that later on if you like. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's uh, you know we're looking at it right now, in fact. Yeah. But it's a you know it's a great looking piece, a great looking table, yes. and uh, you know and chairs, and uh, and that's you know it doesn't stop there. If people like even what we're sitting on, you know the yeah. the, the well, uh, you know the overstuffed, the the, the the feeling of sitting, and and the cushions and the patterns, you know, yeah. of all of these things. I mean, you've got deer, we've got bear, we've got fish, we've got pine cones, we've yeah. got everything else, you know, anything that anybody wants in their home. Yeah, it's really special. And eight-way hand-tied springs and high-density uh, custom cores for the cushions. Uh, it all is all well made. The warranties back it up. This is built to last a long time. Some of the furniture that we have in the store is meant to be passed on from generation to generation. And there's really timeless, rugged, elegant, durability and comfort. These are the things we need in, uh, when you buy, when you invest in a good piece of fine furniture. And I think that's the secret, you know, because uh, when you have something like this and you have, uh, you have children that come and visit, particularly, you know, the people here up in the lake region of the Poconos, yeah. uh, or all through the Poconos, a lot of the homes are second homes. Yeah. And people have their families come and their families' families. And certainly yeah. there's going to be a ton of kids. And if they spill something, it cleans up. Yes. And, they're, the, the, and the furniture is so, I mean, they can, they can beat on it, they can do everything they want to yeah. it, and they can't hurt it. That's so right. It's that kind of a furniture. Um, and beside your travels throughout the United States to, you know, to find all this stuff, I think it's great that you, you know, that you look local. I mean, mm -hmm. I, you have uh -huh. so many individual pieces here from local people. Um, some fantastic tables with, uh, with um, um, the slate tops yes. and, and, and the intricate bottom work, you know, yes. with the wood and those kinds of things I think are just, I think are fantastic. And I think it gives an artesian in the area a chance, really. Yeah you know, to show off their stuff. Yeah, we have some like tables and custom mirrors and uh, stone top desk with birch base. Our screen doors are Pennsylvania made. Uh, we have a uh, solid cherry desk that's from Pennsylvania. A lot of local things and it's really, that's unique, different and special. So if they want something that's uh, one of a kind, uh, yes. certainly this is the place to come because uh, they can find that. And, and as I said when we started the show uh, about all of the accessories, I mean, uh, accessories and gifts. I mean, if you're looking for an unusual gift for someone, you want to bring a housewarming gift, stop at Van Gorder's first. And if you're, if you're here at the lake, you can stop at the store here right across from the high school. Uh, or you can stop at the store up in Honesdale. Same kind of furniture, same kinds of things. And not only do they have those kinds of furniture, but uh, uh, for living rooms and great rooms and, and, and dining rooms, but uh, you've got a, a, a whole set of bedroom furniture, oh, yeah. beds to match, oh, yeah. and I, I, there's just so much, folks. It's just, uh, well, why don't we take them on a little uh, walking tour and show off some of these wonderful pieces? Sounds like a good idea. All right, let's do that. Let's do that. Folks, we'll be right back. Don't go away. Lazy Boy 
President's Day sale is going on now at Hager Furniture. For a limited time only, celebrate with top five savings on recliners starting at just $3.59 and leather from $6.99. Create the space you love with our great selection of Lazy Boy Furniture. Pay no interest for one year. See store for details. Hurry in to the Lazy Boy President's Day sale now, only at Hager Furniture. Hey, it's Girls Night Out. Where are we going? Let's check the GPS. Hey, it says Ned's on 9. Craig, Friday night, where do you want to go, man? Let's do karaoke. Hey, GPS says Ned's on 9. I heard that place is fun. Yeah, let's do it, man. All right. Let's go. Every GPS leads to Ned's on 9 for some great local hospitality. The American flag, symbolizing our way of life. Freedom of expression, words we live by. Express yourself with a flag from the flag store on Route 209 in Scioto. Whether it's an American, military, or wide array of garden flags, stop by the flag store and find a way to express yourself to the world. We also carry sports flags to show your team spirit. Give someone you care about a gift from the flag store, as flags make great gifts. Come see our newly expanded showroom on Route 209 in Scioto. The flag store, honoring those who serve. Celebrate your next occasion with an ice cream cake from Claude's Creamery in Palmerton. Choose from our traditional ice cream cake or design your own. Claude's also has ice cream pies available, like our peanut butter pie. It's never too cold for an ice cream treat. Claude's is open year-round for ice cream, sundaes, milkshakes, and more. Check out our Facebook page and website for specials and flavor of the week. Treat your friends and family to the best ice cream in town. Visit Claude's Creamery in Palmerton. You heard Alex mention Old Hickory Furniture. Scott, this is, this is Old Hickory Furniture, isn't it? Yes, it is, Joanne. This is Old Hickory, and uh, Van Gorder's Furniture is one of only a handful of premium Old Hickory dealers in mm -hmm. the whole United States, which means we get extra discounts, we pass them on. Wonderful, wonderful. I love the way these are smooth on top. Yeah. I mean, I like the wood, but it's really nice having it smooth smooth on top on your arm. I love that. Doesn't it's it so feel nice. great? It's, it's, it's real wonderful. wood. Uh, did you know that hickory is North America's densest hardwood? I knew it was hardwood. I didn't know it was the densest, but I love that, too. It's That's gonna, just wonderful. It's, We've got it made. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to last for generations. For sure. Yes. And comfortable? Oh, my. These cushions, wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to put my feet up. Okay. <laughs> Scott, I love the log furniture. It is absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. Well, thanks, Joanne. This is from Minnesota, from Fireside Lodge Company. This is white cedar. Now, there's so many great things to know about real log furniture. For one, okay, I can see the growth rings right here oh, right. on the bed posts. Mm -hmm, I know about those things, uh-huh. This is called checking. There's a little bit of a split there. It can do that, but it will never break. Mm -hmm. It's real logs. Now, this is what we call a live edge. You see how it's All not right. flat and straight? It's yep. the actual shape of the tree. Mm -hmm. Yep. Look at the drawer. English dovetail front and back, aromatic red cedar on the inside, 100 pound test hardware. There's so much. This furniture is heirloom quality and it will last from generation to generation.